Russia just said no to SpaceX's Dragon. Here's the real reason why. While Americans press buttons, Russians learn physics. A JAXA astronaut who flew both spacecraft just exposed the shocking truth. In Russia, you learn how a microwave works. In America, you just press start. But what happens when that touchscreen fails at 250 miles above Earth? Russia's been flying for 57 years without a single crew loss on Soyuz. Is SpaceX turning astronauts into helpless passengers? Or is Russia stuck in the Stone Age? The answer will blow your mind. Let's dive right in. Picture this. A single astronaut destroys decades of space philosophy with one sentence. JAXA's Kimia Yui has done what almost nobody on Earth has done. He's flown on both Russian, Soyuz, and will pilot SpaceX's Dragon. What he revealed next changed everything. In Russia, if we need to learn how a microwave works, you would be taught the physics of how a microwave works, Yui said. But in the United States, you just press this button and set timers. Wait, what? A microwave comparison just exposed the biggest secret in spaceflight? Absolutely. This isn't about kitchen appliances. This is about life and death at 17,500 miles per hour. Here's the mind-blowing part. While you're reading this, there are astronauts on the International Space Station who can't fix their own spacecraft if something goes wrong. And Russia is furious about it. But why would Russia care how Americans train their astronauts? Because they're building passengers, not pilots. And when you're 250 miles above Earth with nowhere to run, that difference can kill you. You think astronaut training is tough? You haven't seen anything yet. When Russian cosmonauts train for space, they don't just learn to fly, they learn to rebuild their spacecraft with their bare hands. Here's how insane Russian training actually is. Before they even see a spacecraft, cosmonauts spend months studying life support systems so deeply they could rebuild them blindfolded. Why? Because in space, you are the mechanic. The Soyuz spacecraft isn't just a vehicle. It's a 50-year-old mechanical masterpiece with three separate modules. The orbital module burns up on re-entry. The service module, gone. Only the descent module survives, and if you don't understand every bolt, every wire, every system, you're not coming home. But here's where it gets terrifying. The Soyuz uses the KURS docking system. Sure, it can dock automatically, but every cosmonaut must master manual docking. Why? Because when automation fails, and it will fail, you have exactly 90 minutes before your orbit decays and you become space debris. Russian cosmonauts aren't just pilots. They're engineers, mechanics, scientists, and survival experts all rolled into one. They have to be. Because when things go wrong in space, there's no roadside assistance. Is this overkill? Maybe. But Russia's been flying the same basic design for 57 years without killing anyone. That's not luck. That's knowledge. Now enter Elon Musk, and everything Russia believes about spaceflight gets turned upside down. Doug Hurley flew both Space Shuttle and Dragon. His comparison should terrify every Russian engineer. Dragon is much more automated. There's less interaction with the vehicle. Less interaction. Think about that. SpaceX built a spacecraft where astronauts do less. Dragon doesn't have thousands of switches like Russian spacecraft. No analog gauges from the 1960s, just touch screens and clean displays. It's literally flying a spacecraft designed by Apple. Here's the crazy part. While Russian cosmonauts spend years learning manual flight controls, Dragon astronauts train for just-in-case scenarios. The spacecraft flies itself, docks itself, monitors itself. Ground control handles the problems. Astronauts only take over in emergencies. But here's what SpaceX won't admit. When you make everything automatic, you create a single point of catastrophic failure. What happens when the computer that's supposed to save you dies? Ready for some shocking statistics? Russia's Soyuz has been flying since 1967, 57 years. Their crew safety record? Nearly perfect. While other nations had fatal accidents, Soyuz kept bringing people home. Dragon's track record? Still being written. The technology is impressive, but here's the question keeping Russian engineers awake. Are we trading proven reliability for touchscreen convenience? 
Let's run a nightmare scenario. You're on Dragon, 250 miles above Earth. Solar flare hits, electronics die. Ground control goes silent. Your touchscreen is black. Russian cosmonauts? They've trained for this exact scenario for months. They know what to do. Dragon astronauts? They've been trained to trust the machine that just failed them. Who survives? This isn't just about spacecraft design. This is about two completely different philosophies of human survival. Russia's approach comes from Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the father of spaceflight, who believed mastering physics and engineering was essential for space exploration. Russians don't just fly to space. They conquer it through knowledge. SpaceX's philosophy makes space accessible to everyone. You don't need a PhD to fly Dragon. Scientists, doctors, even regular people can go to space without becoming rocket scientists. Sounds great, right? But here's the problem. Are we creating astronauts or space tourists? Russian cosmonauts come from military traditions that value self-reliance, technical mastery, and the ability to solve any problem with their hands. American astronauts are being trained to trust systems and call for help. When your life depends on it, which approach do you trust? Here's the terrifying truth. Automation fails. Not if. When. Boeing Starliner had software problems that nearly killed the mission. Space shuttle computers failed multiple times. Even Dragon had parachute failures that could have been catastrophic. Meanwhile, Russian cosmonauts have manually handled cooling system failures, docking computer crashes, life support malfunctions, all by hand. When Soyuz MS-10 had a booster failure in 2018, the crew didn't panic. They knew exactly what to do because they understood every system. The horrifying reality? As spacecraft become more automated, astronauts become more helpless. We're creating space travelers who are experts at pushing buttons but useless when those buttons stop working. Here's the truth. SpaceX doesn't want you to know. Russia didn't reject Dragon because of politics. They rejected it because it violates everything they believe about human survival in space. To Russians, an astronaut who can't fix their own life support system isn't a pilot, they're a passenger. Dragon turns highly trained space professionals into glorified tourists with science degrees. But wait, here's the plot twist that changes everything. What if both sides are completely wrong? What if the future isn't about choosing between manual control and automation? What if it's about combining Russian training with American technology? Picture this. Cosmonauts with deep technical knowledge flying automated spacecraft, they can override instantly. The reliability of Russian training with the efficiency of SpaceX automation. But here's the question nobody's asking. If we create the perfect spacecraft that never fails, what happens to the humans inside when it inevitably does? Are we building the future of space exploration? Or are we creating a generation of astronauts who'll die the moment their computer crashes? So here we are. Russia builds astronauts who can survive anything. SpaceX builds spacecraft that never should fail. But what happens when the unstoppable force meets the immovable object? The real question isn't whether Russia was right to refuse Dragon. The question is, what kind of humans do we want exploring the universe? Self-reliant problem solvers who can fix anything with their hands? Or highly trained operators who trust advanced systems to keep them alive? Maybe the answer isn't choosing sides. Maybe it's about recognizing that space is big enough for both philosophies. Because when humanity finally reaches Mars, we'll need both. The Russian mindset that refuses to give up and the American innovation that makes the impossible routine. But here's what keeps me up at night. What happens when the next generation of space explorers has never learned to think for themselves? When the computers fail, and they will, who's going to save them? What do you think? Should astronauts be mechanics or passengers? Drop your answer in the comments, and let's figure out together how humanity should explore the stars. If this space drama got your heart racing, hit that subscribe button, because this is just the beginning. Space Corps is where we dive deep into the stories that shape our future among the stars. NASA engineers are shocked. SpaceX just revealed a mini starship that uses five times less fuel than the original. 
While the full Starship needs 580 tons of fuel to reach Mars, this tiny beast only needs 116 tons. But wait, it gets crazier. How can something smaller be so much better? And why did NASA spend decades believing Mars missions were impossible? The answer will blow your mind. What secret breakthrough makes this mini Starship the game changer everyone missed? Let's dive right in. Here's the brutal reality NASA has been hiding from us. For over 50 years, they've been telling the world that Mars missions are just around the corner. But behind closed doors, their engineers were facing a mathematical nightmare that made grown scientists cry. Picture this. You're trying to send a fully loaded Starship to Mars. This beast weighs 235 tons when completely empty. Just the empty shell. To push this monster from Earth orbit to Mars, you need 580 tons of fuel. That's like needing 580 car tanks of gas for a single trip across the solar system. But wait, it gets absolutely insane. Once this giant reaches Mars, there's no atmosphere to help it slow down. Earth has thick air that can slow down planes and parachutes. Mars, it's basically a vacuum. So Starship has to fire its engines constantly during landing, burning through precious fuel like a drunk sailor spending money. By the time it touches down on the red planet, the fuel tanks are nearly bone dry. Now comes the real nightmare, getting home. To return to Earth, Starship needs another 600 tons of fuel. But here's the kicker. There are no gas stations on Mars. The only option? Make fuel from literally nothing but air and ice. This process is called the Sabatier reaction, and it's about as fun as it sounds. You have to harvest carbon dioxide from Mars' paper-thin atmosphere, dig up water from underground ice, then combine them in a complex chemical dance that would make Breaking Bad look simple. How long does this miracle take? A mind-numbing 500 days if absolutely everything goes perfectly. And when has anything in space exploration ever gone perfectly? The power requirements alone are insane. This fuel factory needs continuous electricity equivalent to running 40 American homes for over a year. On a planet where dust storms can block sunlight for weeks, NASA learned this lesson the hard way when a massive dust storm in 2018 killed their Opportunity rover after 15 years of service. The poor thing just couldn't generate enough power to survive. Then Dr. Robert Zubrin stepped into the picture. This is the same aerospace genius who originally inspired Elon Musk's Mars obsession back in the early 2000s. But now Zubrin was about to deliver a reality check that would shake SpaceX to its core. Zubrin looked at NASA's impossible math and asked one simple question. Why are we making this so damn complicated? His analysis was brutal but brilliant. The full-size starship is like bringing a freight train to deliver a pizza. It's massive overkill that creates more problems than it solves. Enter the game changer, the mini starship. This isn't just a smaller rocket. It's a complete revolution in how we think about Mars travel. Instead of one giant spacecraft struggling to do everything, Zubrin proposed a tag-team approach that would make NASA's engineers slap their foreheads in disbelief. Here's how it works. The full-size starship acts like a space taxi, carrying the mini starship to high Earth orbit like a mothership deploying a fighter jet. Once there, the big starship immediately returns home, ready for its next mission. The mini starship continues alone to Mars with surgical precision. The numbers are absolutely mind-blowing. While the full Starship guzzles 580 tons of fuel for the Mars journey, the mini Starship sips only 116 tons. That's five times more efficient. But efficiency is just the beginning of this revolution. Remember that nightmare 600-ton fuel requirement for the return trip? The mini Starship flips this problem on its head like a magician revealing a trick. It needs only 37.5 tons for the journey home. That's not a typo. It's 16 times less fuel than the original plan. What does this mean in real terms? Instead of astronauts being stranded on Mars for 500 days waiting for fuel production, they could potentially return home in just 30 days. This transforms Mars missions from suicide missions into actual round trips. The psychological breakthrough is equally massive. Musk's original plan called for sending 100 people to Mars as permanent colonists. But who wants to volunteer for a one-way ticket to a frozen desert where everything can kill you? 
The mini Starship changes the entire conversation by making return trips realistic, not science fiction. Think about the mission profile completely differently now. The original Starship plan required six separate rocket launches just to get one mission to Mars. Six launches, each one costing hundreds of millions of dollars. The mini Starship needs only two launches, one to carry it to orbit and maybe one back up if something goes wrong. But the story gets even more incredible. A Spanish engineering student took Zubrin's concept and evolved it into something called Mars Direct 3. This system isn't just about efficiency anymore. It's about making sure astronauts actually survive and return home alive. Picture this scenario. Two years before any humans leave Earth, four unmanned spacecraft launch to Mars during the optimal transfer window. Each one has a specific job, like a perfectly choreographed space ballet. Ship A is a full-size starship loaded with industrial equipment, fuel-making machinery, carbon dioxide collectors, water extraction systems, and solar-powered robots that work 24-7, preparing for human arrival. Even if no water is found on Mars, it can still produce fuel using stored hydrogen and atmospheric CO2. Ship B is a mini starship that's essentially a mobile space station. It carries life support systems, food for months, oxygen recyclers, water purifiers, living quarters, a rover for exploration, and backup oxygen production systems. Both ships land safely and begin automatic preparation. Two years later, when Earth and Mars align again for the next transfer window, the real mission begins. Mini Ship C carries the first human crew of about 10 astronauts. They land knowing everything is already prepared and tested. A specialized rover immediately begins moving fuel from Ship A to Ship C, ensuring enough fuel for emergency return if needed. The final piece arrives as Ship D, another full-size starship carrying heavy construction equipment, ice mining machinery, a long-range rover for extended exploration, and materials for building a permanent research base. Here's the secret that makes this entire system possible. Nuclear power.